Okay, so I'd like to go over just some fundamental concepts um, of machine learning. And in particular, I want to talk about some important problems, like what are, what are the basic machine learning problems that you might encounter? And this is just some of them, um, but there's, there's plenty more. Anyway, so I want to start with classification. So I already kind of went over classification quite a lot, but um, I'm just going to put it in formal notation here. So the input to a classification method are uh, examples, which are these ordered pairs, X and Y. Uh, they are also called instances with labels or observations or units or you know what data points, whatever you want to call them. That's what they are. Okay, uh, and then the X's are usually in some, uh, again, vector space. Uh, we usually write our P, R to the P. And then uh, in binary classification, the y's are either negative one and one, or they're zero and one, depending on what uh, you know what your particular terminology is. And so, for instance, uh, I have an example here where we are um, just classifying uh, handwritten threes from handwritten fives, where each um, handwritten digit is expressed as an image, and the image is expressed as a vector. Okay, and then you would uh, your goal would be then to construct a function f that would take in a new uh, image and then spit out a real value label, which is your confidence that this is a handwritten three. Okay. And then you'd use the sign of that value of f to do the classification. And there are, again, a huge number of po possible applications, including, you know, handwriting recognition, speech recognition, and you know, fingerprint recognition, and <laughs> Uh, document uh, classification, is this a news article or is this an article about sports, um, detecting, again, credit card transactions that are fraudulent and so on and so forth. Okay, so let me talk about a variation on vanilla classification, which is, um, which is conditional probability estimation. So here, the, the data are the same type of data, right? You still have feature vectors and, and labels. And here, the output is, is a function f. And your goal is to get the value of f to be as close as close as possible to the probability that y equals 1 given x, okay? So here, the sign of f of x is not, uh, is not this, really the thing you're, you're looking for. What you're really looking for is the value of f of x, and it should be as close as possible to that, to that probability that y equals 1 given x. Okay, so here the applications are estimating probabilities, right? Probabilities of, of, of an airplane to fail based on the, the state of its parts, um, the, the probability for a, a uh, person to default on their loan based on their um, statistics in their loan application, like their history of uh, being able to repay their loans. Okay, another problem that's very commonly uh, addressed in machine learning is regression. So in regression, the labels are real valued. They're no longer yes or no questions. We are now looking at, at real valued um, real valued data. Uh, so some applications are to try to predict someone's income or to predict the price of a house if you sell it, or to predict the demand for energy. Actually, every every power company solves a regression problem every single day, right? Because they, they need to know what the demand for energy is going to be tomorrow based on you know the current energy consumption and what the weather is and what people are doing. Um, so, and, and they use that uh, d predicted demand to figure out which, um, which of their different power plants to operate because some of the power plants take longer than others to start up and some are dirtier than others and some are more expensive than others. So they have to use that demand um, to plan because energy needs to be consumed as soon as it's made. Uh, also, you could, you could try to predict test scores or other you know, measures of whatever. Okay. Uh, ranking, ranking, supervised ranking is a really interesting problem. It's somehow in between classification and regression. Um, so for ranking, the labels are actually on pairs of data. Okay, so if you have, um, so your, your input is, is just X's, but the, the labels are these special pairs. So you have a, a pair of data points IK um, that are labeled in a way that, you know, we think I should be ranked above K. Okay, so uh, the, the kind of uh, key example for this is, is movie ratings. Like, okay, um, that user has ranked, that user has seen these two movies and they like this movie better than that one. And then this other user has liked 
these two movies, they rank this one better than that one. Um, and, and that's the only data you get. Like you don't, you don't actually get numerical ratings that are meaningful. You just know that this one's better than that one. And so you're supposed to then construct a full, uh, you know, a, a model that will, that will be useful for predicting um, whether given two random movies, whether someone will like the first one better than the second one. Okay, so that's, the, that's a, a ranking problem here. Okay, so you have, as your labels, you have all these special pairs that I should be ranked above K. So in other words, you, you, you want to construct this model F of X so that F of X I should be larger than F of X K for most of these special pairs in your training set. And you're hoping that, that if you construct this model properly, not only will it work on the training set, but it'll also work on the test set. So these are movies that you haven't seen before, again, just expressed as, as feature vectors. Okay, so the output um, is again, this function um, that should try to rank i above k as much as possible for all of the ik pairs that you get in your data set. Um, good applications for ranking are search engines. Uh, there was a lot of uh, activity in learning to rank uh, a while back where people were trying to use um, learning to learning to rank methods to figure out which web pages to rank above which other ones. And I think I think Bing still uses learning to rank methods. Um, it's quite useful for sort of um, uh, uh, learning to rank on web pages that are brand new or that are unusual somehow. It's also useful for predictive maintenance applications. Like if you if you just want to know which airplanes you should rank above which other ones um, for service, then you can use learning to rank uh, method. Okay, so. Um, finding patterns or correlations in large data sets. So this is pattern mining. This is um, actually an unsupervised problem. And so the input are just the feature vectors. You don't necessarily get the labels. You can include, you can, you can do pattern mining with the labels, but you don't have to. Um, so the most, the most um, uh, common <laughs> um, pattern mining problem is to find uh, these, these these frequent patterns um, and the story uh, the way the story goes is that diapers implies beer this is the this is a frequent pattern that someone found while they were analyzing some grocery store data uh, and unfortunately the the story is made up but but it's very cute so so the idea is that they noticed that husbands who are going on their weekly diaper runs would combine that with their weekly beer runs. And so if they place diapers in one place in the grocery store and beer in another place in the grocery store, they could sell more of both of them. And um, it's a really cute story. Uh, so yeah, <laughs> but, uh, but pattern mining algorithms are actually very, very useful as a data exploration tool. And I, I generally uh, encourage people to try to use these frequent um, item set mining tools to try to find patterns in their data as part of as part of just data exploration. Okay, so clustering is another unsupervised problem that we'll cover a lot in this class. So in clustering, you want to group data into similar clusters that somehow belong together. So these are, are clusters where the objects within the cluster are more similar to each other than to those in other clusters. Okay, so uh, um, again, it's unsupervised. So you don't get any labels. You just get the feature vectors. And then the output is that you take each data point and you put it into one of the K clusters. Um, and sometimes you know what K is in advance and sometimes you don't. Uh, so, and sometimes you can just try a whole lot of different K values and find the one that you think clusters the best. And there are measures that you can use to determine how good you think your, your clustering is. So for instance, you can compare your uh, the distance between points in the cluster with the distances to points outside of the cluster. And clustering is actually a very, very useful um, um, way of thinking about data because you can use it for, for example, if you're doing market research, you can cluster your consumers into different clusters and then maybe you would want to hand, you know, uh, uh, treat the different customers in the different groups differently. Or else, um, a lot of, there's a lot of genetic work where they cluster genes into different families, and then also image segmentation is a type of clustering problem where you take an image and you chop it up into different pieces based on the the way the image is colored. Uh, um, in medical imaging, for instance, they do a lot of image segmentation because they want to understand where the different organs in the body are 
in the image that they're looking at. Okay, and then density estimation is also an unsupervised problem. And density estimation is the hardest of the problems that I've listed so far. It's very, very challenging because you need quite a lot of data to do it um, to get any kind of reasonable density estimates. Okay, so here, you, you again, you just have the x's, and then your output is actually a function that's supposed to tell you what, uh, what the probability is for an x to be a particular value. Okay, so in other words, um, is this particular value of x likely? Like, is it, is it a common value of x? Or is it an uncommon value of x? And if p of x is really large, that means it's a very common value of x. And it's, if it's very small, it means then it's, it's very uncommon. And some applications of density estimation are things like anomaly detection. For instance, if you, if you find that you are, uh, that your machine is in a state where it has a very low density, that means it's in a, maybe an anomalous state that doesn't happen very often. You might want to think about, okay, is there something wrong? Is, is, you know, is something happening? Um, also, uh, if you're doing um, you know, credit card fraud and you notice these like anomalous <laughs> transactions that just don't seem to have things in common with the way normal transactions are conducted, then you might flag that and like go, go and take a look at it. Okay, so just to recap, um, so rule mining, clustering, and density estimation, those are unsupervised methods. They don't have any ground truth. Um, whereas classification, ranking, and conditional probability estimation, those are supervised where there is ground truth. Um, and um, in all of these different problems, the way that we solve them in machine learning, we don't necessarily know the underlying distribution that the data come from. And we don't even assume that we know the form of the distribution that the data come from. We're just supposed to try to solve these problems regardless of what the distribution actually is um, where, where the data arise. Okay, thank you.